we could proceed. So good morning, good afternoon to everyone. And thanks for those of you who are able to join us uh, in person for this uh, end of year webinar from Gender Data Network sponsored. This seminar is uh, sponsored by Economic Commission for Africa in collaboration with Paris 21, uh, Data 2X and uh, Open Data Watch. And we're really glad to have you. I know men, it's, it's not a suitable time. Many people are really busy at the end of the year. That's why we want to record it and later make it accessible for others to watch. We have a very nice program set up for today, which I will introduce. We're gonna start with opening remarks by our dear friend and colleague, uh, Fatuma, and she doesn't need introduction. You all know she works at the CITSCO and, uh, and she works at the UN Economic Commission for Africa and among many responsibilities that she has, she is also uh, in charge of the gender, um, gender data and gender statistics in, in the Africa region. So uh, after welcoming remark from uh, Fatima, we have uh, two exciting presentations, one by my dear friend and colleague, uh, Janara Said from Open Data Watch, who's gonna take us through the uh, latest advancements in the, the monitoring of uh, financing for uh, data and in particular financing also for gender data using the Clearing House, which has been very recently developed and launched at the World Data Forum in October. And after that, Wunderbar is going to take us, and Wunderbar, you all know, uh, the coordinator for uh, GDN and UN Economic Commission for Africa. And Wunderbar is going to take us through a presentation of the using different indices of what the profile of uh, uh, GDN countries are in various domains. And between those two, we also have some poll qu polling questions. We, not, we don't have that many people online, but we nevertheless want to proceed and sort of show you some of those questions before uh, Jay's presentation and before Wendebar's presentation. So that's our today's agenda. At the end, if there are any questions or during the course of presentations, if you have any questions, please put them in the question and answer box in the chat and we would be happy to respond or at the end we'll come to you for anyone who wants to raise their hand to ask any questions. So with, the, with that program, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Fatuma to do the welcoming for us before we start with our first presentation. Fatuma, over to you. Thank you, Faida. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this Gender Data Network meeting. Let me start by thanking our partners, Data2x, Open Data Watch, and Party21 for their continued support and collaboration with ECA in the implementation of the Gender Data Network project since its inception in 2018. We have in the network 15 African countries, and I'm happy to see that most of the members are here. And hello and welcome to all of you. This meeting aims to inform Gender Data Network members about new tools and the clearinghouse for financing development data. To this end, it will allow us to have a better understanding of the gender profile of GDN member countries and the clearinghouse initiative and financing development data portal developed recently with an emphasis on gender data financing. Last month, we were working to have a webinar on topic of integrating different data sources to produce gender statistics. However, we had to reschedule this event to January after we noted that the proposed speakers could not be available on that date. I am here just to say hi and welcome you to this event. 
I hope you all had safe and wonderful time in the year 2021. Since we are heading, we are heading to the end of a year that have been quite challenging due to the pandemic that disturbed our work program over the year. However, we managed to implement most of the activities planned in the project, and I hope these activities done so far, both uh, 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 so far by ECA in partnership with Party 21 Data 2X and Open Data Watch have given you better knowledge and skill on gender and gender statistics. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate my thanks and appreciation for attending this meeting despite your busy schedule. Now, let me give the floor to, uh, to Shada Baje, that is the moderator of the meeting to give presenters, uh, 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 to guide presenters and lead discussions. I thank you, Shada, for your support as well. Again, thank you all for joining today's meeting and I'm looking forward for the fruitful discussion. Thank you. Over to you, Shada. Thank you, thanks, Vatu, and thanks for <clears throat> such a warm and uh, a welcoming remarks. Uh, great for the start of this webinar uh, on the first thing on Monday morning for us in the US, but you know, maybe later in the day for the rest of you. So over now uh, to you, uh, dear Jay, to take us through the clearinghouse, and I'm sure you have some slides also to share with our colleagues. Well, um, thank you so much, Sheda, and I hope everyone can hear me and see me all right. Um, good afternoon, good morning to all of you, and I'm really glad to be here and to be presenting for all of you today. Um, and so, as we mentioned, this will be a brief overview and presentation on the Clearinghouse for Financing Development Data. And before we get started, I would really just wanted to launch, as Shia mentioned, a quick poll exercise to get a sense of what information you wish you knew about the, uh, the development data financing landscape. So. If you bear with me, um, I have launched a poll. And so the question is, what information about the development data financing landscape do you wish you had easy access to? And so you can select all that apply. Um, the options are funding flows by country, funding flows by SDG, national budget allocation to data, national data and statistics priorities, the state of gender data financing by country, and then of course other. And if you select other, it would be great if you could write in the chat what um, you're thinking of when you select that. So the poll is launched, so please feel free to submit some answers. Give it another couple of seconds um, for any last people to submit a response. And I will share the results. So as you can see, um, people are interested in all of this information. I'm not surprised to see that state of gender data financing by country um, was top of the list as, along with funding flows by country. Um, but I can see that all of these are the right areas that you're interested in. And I'm really excited because I think that the clearinghouse is really an avenue through which to access a lot of this information that you're interested in. Um, so I will stop sharing those results and start screen sharing the clearinghouse itself. So I hope everyone can see my screen. If you cannot, please uh, feel free to interrupt me right now. Um, but uh, as I said, this, I'm very excited to share this with you today. This is a culmination of work that was conducted by a very dedicated group of partners and colleagues for over two years. And as Shida mentioned, it was launched in Bern at the World Data Forum in October. So this is still in a very new and exciting platform that I think will be really uh, useful to you in your work. And I'd love uh, to hear more about um, how you'd want to use some of the data that you're interested in collecting um, about, gender, about gender data financing or the development data financing landscape. 
So this was born in the Burn Network where together with members and across different stakeholders group, there was an agreement that, you know, we really do need to take a holistic action to achieve smarter financing for development data. And this includes not only just domestic mobilization and increasing aid, but also using that aid more effectively and then finding synergies and collaboration opportunities. And so to achieve this aim of increasing transparency, coordination, visibility, and collaboration in the development data financing space, we see that the Clearinghouse was born. And so what it aims to do is uh, provide detailed information about the demand for and supply of statistical support. And so it draws on a range of data sources from methodologies developed by our team at Paris 21, uh, at the Burn Network and at ODW. Um, and, um, joint and a joint survey that was conducted uh, and run by the UN Statistical Division, the World Bank, Paris 21, and also collecting data from OECD DAC profiles. So as you can see here on the main page, you'll be able to access uh, information on over 30, 36,000 projects, um, profiles on 23 IDA countries and seven, and seven uh, partners and development providers. And you'll be able to download over 700 resources related to different projects that are being conducted uh, in these various countries. So if you'd permit me, I'd love to uh, walk you through what you would be able to access through the Clearinghouse and then give you an overview of the gender data channel that really zooms in on the state of gender data financing, both globally, regionally, and in particular countries. So as you can see here on the homepage, you can access a range of detailed information about financing for data and statistics. So you can use these tabs up here at the top of the screen to um, first access funding flows. So this is the supply side of the landscape. So you'd be able to identify country, region, and global level funding flows, both by SDG and by priority areas. If you were interested in funding opportunities, here you would be able to find detailed profiles on both recipient countries and aid providers. You'd be able to learn more about their strategic priorities, the funding that has been committed and that is needed for some of these statistical projects that are being planned. You'd also be able to find future budget expectations for different, gender, for different uh, development data and statistics uh, projects. If you were interested in learning more about specific projects or accessing resources, we have these tabs up here as well. And you could find key resources, including 700, as I said, uh, policy and other documents by clicking here. But one of the key things about the Clearinghouse is that it's not just about accessing this information, it's about building a community of practice. And so there's also a forum where you could ask questions, connect with other uh, NSO partners and users of the platform and also connect with the developers. So I'd really encourage you after this uh, meeting to take a look at that as well. So suppose I was, and as I mentioned, of course, um, to this blue button, you can access the gender data financing channel, which provides you comprehensive overview of financing for gender data over the past 10 years. And I'll be giving you a closer look at that shortly. But suppose I was interested in, interested in, as you, I think, all mentioned in the poll, broad trends in data financing by country and over time. I would click the Funding Flows tab, and you'll see that it automatically shows you a global overview with near real-time financing flows by the particular time period selected. So as you can see, it automates to 2017 to 2019, but I could click one year if I was particularly interested in that. But let's look at a time period for the sake of this uh, presentation. So as you can see, you'll be able to look at this information by SDGs that's up here with this colorful bar chart, by government functions and statistical activities. So it gives you a unique way of looking at the different data that uh, on gender, on, sorry, development data funding flows um, coming into globally, but also if you were interested in a particular country, you could click 
and look at that in more detail. So suppose I was interested in Zambia. I would go to the map and click Zambia and this blue box would appear that would give me an overview of the commitment and disbursement of development data financing to Zambia in the time period that I selected. So here you can see that in this between 2017 to 2019, Zambia received a commitment of 17.24 million US dollars to data and statistics. You can also see that the, who the top providers were to Zambia within this period. So I can see that it's Sweden, United States and United Kingdom. So if I was the NSO of Zambia, this would give me good access to information to understand the landscape of my country, to see who is funding development data and statistics and who I can potentially connect with for additional funding or learn more about. If I was interested in learning more about Sweden as a particular uh, provider country and partner, I could click here to learn more about them or navigate up to the funding opportunities page, as I mentioned earlier, for detailed information about the particular recipient and a provider country. But as I mentioned, and I think as was indicated in the poll, there's also thematic entry points for data and statistics. And what's most relevant to our GDN members is of course, gender data financing. So if I wanted to learn more about what the gender data landscape looked like, I could click on this blue button here, which as you can see is accessible from every page on the clearinghouse for financing development data. And so here, as you can see, the, um, the gender data channel provides in-depth and comprehensive overview of gender data financing in over 20 IDA eligible countries over the last 10 years. And again, this also like the rest of the clearinghouse defaults to a global view. But as I scroll down, you can see um, globally that we have seen a sharp decline in how much funding is being um, allocated to gender data financing. You can also see here on the right, an overview of the gender related SDGs to get a sense of which indicators require sex disaggregated data. And as I continue to scroll, I'll be able to identify who are the top gender data financing providers globally within the particular region, uh, within the particular timeframe. Here you can see that globally, the World Bank is uh, the United Nations Children's Fund, Sweden and United Kingdom are among the top five providers to gender data. Here on the right, I can also see different projects. If I was interested in learning more about a particular project in uh, Mozambique or Tanzania, I could click and learn more about how um, and access those projects documents that I mentioned earlier. If we kept scrolling down, you can even access, if available for certain countries, funding opportunities um, and the total gender data statistics budget. Of course, we didn't calculate that globally because we don't, um, that information is not as easily accessible and wouldn't be as useful. But you can also see the results of these investments. And here, one of the things that we look at is the average number of gender data relevant instruments that are conducted, in this case, around the world. So we're looking at the number of household surveys, labor force surveys, time use surveys, et cetera. But of course, um, like I mentioned, you wouldn't just be looking at this globally. You, would, you could potentially be interested and you'd use this drop-down menu to identify regions that you're interested in and even particular countries. So suppose I'm, um, I work in, um, I'm an NGO, I work at an NGO, or I work at the NSO, in Rwanda. And I'm interested in learning more about the gender data financing landscape in my country. I want to get a one-stop shop piece of information. So here I would use this search. I could use this search bar to find the country that I'm interested in, click, and the information would then update to provide me information about that particular country. So here I would scroll down as I showed you earlier and I'd be able to look at funding flows in Rwanda for gender data financing across the last 10 years. And as you can see here, there's been a sharp decline in the amount of money that is going towards gender data financing in Rwanda over the last few years. Similarly, you'll see those gender related SDGs on the right. And then I would continue to scroll to be able to identify 
um, who are the top providers to for gender data uh, financing in Rwanda? Again, I'll be able to see that United Nations Children Fund is the top provider providing 95% of the funding allocated within this time period. And then I'd be able to see who the other providers are working in this space. This gives me opportunities to identify potential collaborators, people I'd want to reach out to and connect with. And then as I mentioned, you could click on some of these these projects and learn more about how they're related to gender data, what information they're collecting, um, and learn more if I wanted to, if I was from another country and wanted to learn more and then adapt this to my particular context. As I mentioned earlier, you could look at funding opportunities. Here you'll be able to identify and see what, how much money was allocated to gender data and statistics within the national strategy for development of statistics for Rwanda. So this gives us an idea of how much the government is allocating to this particular uh, area of focus. And as I mentioned, you'd be able to access planned gender data projects for Rwanda and, and click and learn more. And of course, a timeline of results. So what is this money going towards? How do we see how many household surveys are being conducted? And of course, recognizing in the future how the pandemic may have impacted this. Um, so this is just a brief overview of one particular country. I'd love to also show you um, if you were interested in this from a regional perspective to compare what it looks like for Africa, let's say, just to give you a brief overview. Again, you could see what the gender data financing flows for this time period looks like. And again, we see that sharp decline that we also saw in the case of Rwanda. And again, identify top providers, etc. But this really gives you an idea and information to understand the gender data landscape in a particular country, in a particular region, or globally. It provides an opportunity to cross-pollinate with different uh, countries, learn more from their projects, see who's funding gender data in different parts of the world to identify opportunities to continue to make sure that we're collecting the right information to really uh, create opportunities um, for our citizens and, and understand how we're working towards uh, the sustainable development goals. I can stop sharing here, but I would be really interested in learning a little bit more from your perspective um, to see sort of as we think, um, as we think through, actually, I think we, I'll stop there and let, uh, pass back to Sheila, um, because I think we're having a little issue with our second poll for now. So Sheila, I'll pass it over to you so that you can introduce Wonderbur and his presentation. Of course, we'll be around for questions, so please feel free to drop them in the chat as we continue. So thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Jade. This was very interesting. Of um, of course, I I know the uh, the clearinghouse, but every time I hear the presentation, I realize how rich uh, what a rich uh, information platform it is. And and I hope uh, the GDN members will get to use it. We would be happy to provide uh, more information or even answer any questions that you have or kind of you know, take you through the, uh, the clearinghouse again on any basis with Miriam and Wunderbar's uh, help. So if there's no burning questions right now, if there is, please raise your hand uh, and uh, I'll give you the floor. Otherwise we will go ahead and proceed to our next presentation. And as you see from uh, Jay, just put the link to the um, uh, clearinghouse uh, in the chat. So if you want to copy that and use it later on, and we will also remind you uh, later on of the link. It really is a very good resource and we've spent quite a bit of time and energy, particularly on the gender channel. So any feedback you would have on uh, when you use it, uh, uh, any feedback on how we can improve it would be really, really appreciated. So uh, I don't see any, any burning questions. <laughs> So let's go to our second presentation. I, so we had a polling question. So I understand we're not gonna ask that polling question. We're just gonna move, the, move to the presentation um, that Wunderbar has prepared for us to take you through the profile of your countries, of the GDN countries, looking through the lens of different um, global uh, indices that are, um, that are used you know, across the world 
but how does it look for your country? So Wunderbar has this presentation to take you through. Wunderbar, over to you. Uh, thank you, Shaida. Uh, thank you everyone for coming for this uh, virtual meeting, actually, even if you are busy on your routine task. Uh, yeah, as Shaida said, I'm going to present today about this gender profile of GDN member countries uh, using uh, different international data sources that could show a gender gap across these countries and also uh, a data source that can show overall performance of SASIS in a given country. So I will try to focus uh, for our GDN member countries. So the purpose of this presentation is to show a uh, gender profile of GDN member countries using various standard indexes that show gender gap, gender gap on different sectors, in economic sector, in social sector, like education, health. So that's uh, using this different data source. I will try to uh, you know, see the gender gap across countries. And also I will try to refer different international data sources, as I said before and then see the overall performance of uh, national statistics, how the data is open for any public user uh, in easily and accessible way. Uh, as you can see, the first uh, five lines, these are data sources that could show gender gap uh, on different sectors for different countries. And then the last uh, two, uh, data sources are the one that help to see the overall SASIS performance of uh, different countries, including our GDN member. We'll see all each one by one through just uh, you know demonstrating the difference uh, for our GDN member countries. Uh, so uh, one of the data sources that could show gender gap on different countries is the Global Gender Gap Index that could be accessed from the World Economic Forum uh, database. Uh, this is the index that could show in gender gap in economic sector, in, uh, yeah, I can show, in education sector, health sector, and political involvement. And then we can see uh, which country has, you know, a good score on that perspective or, uh, not yet, I mean, a uh, wider gap on women and women on these different sectors in different fields. Uh, based on the data that I obtained from this global economic forum database, I tried to see uh, the overall achievement of, uh, you know, globally and also for African countries. As you can see, the blue color is the global score and the yellow color is for Africa. And you can see here so far globally, only 71% gender gap difference is closed. Whereas in Africa is average score so far is 69%. That means around 31% of gender gap difference is not yet closed in Africa. When we see this Overall score in each sector, maybe subcategories like political empowerment sector, health and survival education, as you can see in the uh, bar graph. Uh, the political empowerment sector is the one which had, you know, show uh, wider gender gap difference. As you can see the, the bar graph, so far in Africa, uh, only 23% of gender gap difference is yet closed. The remaining 77 is not yet. Uh, relatively, health, education, and other sectors are, uh, have better uh, score or somehow uh, small gender gap difference. When I come to specifically for our GDN member countries, uh, for example, in the political empowerment sector, as you can see uh, the bar graph, Rwanda, South Africa, Ethiopia is in the top with a relatively better score of this percentage. Whereas among these GDN member countries, Cote d'Ivoire is uh, in least, and Nigeria, you can see uh, there is wider gender gap difference on the political empowerment sector on these countries. Uh, when I come to the second uh, data source, I mean, in economic participation sector, uh, as you can see again, 
So far, on average, the member countries feel the gender gap by 76 percent. That means there is a remaining 24 percent uh, yet to hope close soon. Uh, when we see comparative difference for our GDN member countries, Lesotho founded the top, uh, Zambia, as you can see the bar graph, still Cote d'Ivoire, the, the, the country with wider gender gap difference, and Ethiopia is also in the bottom, South Africa is still in the top, I mean, least country with wider gender gap difference on this economic participation sector. Uh, Wonder, Wonder, can you speak louder, please? Sometimes your voice drops off. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, this headset, uh, is that now good or as it is, Shaida? Sorry. Much, much, much better. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's a headset. So when, I, when we see the education attainment uh, for our GDN member countries, based on the data that I obtained from this global uh, World Economic Forum data of gender gap in the, I mean, index. Uh, there is a uh, few countries who ensure gender equality, uh, like Lesotho, Botswana, South Africa, they score 100, but there is some still uh, countries uh, like Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Ethiopia, found in the, the bottom, comparatively wider gender gap difference on this education sector also. When I come to the last category for this uh, uh, data, actually health and survival status, as you can see, many GDN countries scored 98%, uh, but there is still few countries who are found in uh, somehow behind, uh, like Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal. When I come to the second uh, data that shows a gender gap difference, that's Women, Business and the Law Index, which can be accessed from World uh, Bank database. It shows uh, the index how the existing laws and regulation affect the women participation in different economic sector. As you can see, they used around eight sectors or fields to measure this index, like going to place, uh, starting a job, getting paid, you can see a list of uh, fields or categories that help to measure the overall index of these countries. So uh, finally, we can see how the existing role of a country or regulations directly or indirectly affect uh, the countries. I mean, the women is to participate on this different economic sector. Uh, based on the data that I found there in this World Bank database, uh, I tried to categorize our GDN member countries. As you can see the map, uh, countries with green color show better score. As you can see this legend, uh, that means those countries uh, existing laws regulations lessly affect compared to other countries with this purple color or yellow color countries. Actually, the purple color relatively uh, with wider gender gap difference on this women business and the low index actually. Uh, when I come to the third database or data source that could show the gender gap difference on this, in these different countries, including our GDN member country, this OECD social institution and gender index, it measures discrimination against women in different social institutions like uh, discrimination in the family, restricted physical integrity, access to productive and financial resources, and also restricted in civil liabilities. Uh, they just look all these four categories with help of sort of indicators actually in each category. So finally, the overall score uh, is calculated for many countries, including our GDN member countries. And as you can see the bar uh, graph, there is some countries who had better score with green color, that is no means uh, discrimination or restriction of women on this different sector is somehow low or, and with country red color shows there is high restriction or discrimination of women on these four categories. When we see uh, actually uh, the, these four categories by country, 
uh, you can see in which uh, category or sector is, you know, each country is high or relatively better. As you can see the map, uh, for example, Tanzania, here, uh, the blue color shows discrimination in the family with around 80% score. That means there is high discrimination of women in the family uh, in Tanzania. Uh, you can also see detail other countries like Cote d'Ivoire, this gray color, restricted access to productive and financial resource, still with high score around 75%. So we can say in Cote d'Ivoire there is high restricted access to productive and financial resources. The other uh, data source that help to see gender gap difference in different countries are African Gender Index. That's also for uh, all African countries. It's a data is collected in 2019. You can see detailed information and then they try to categorize the involvement of women in economic center, social sector, when we say social, actually health, education, and then in political empowerment or involvement sector. So there is detailed information. You can see the websites to just look for both our GDN member countries and also for other African countries. It's clear SGD indicators are the one who want also to see gender difference in different sector. Uh, so, you can see those gender achievements in using these SGD indicators uh, using different international sources. When I come to the last part uh, of this uh, the data source that help to see the overall classical performance of a nation, this open data inventory index is the one that help to see how the data is open for any public users. And then how is the data is also complete? Uh, uh, that's all uh, data, uh, you know, you know, collected in both governmental and other governmental organization in uh, different countries. So there is also another data, I mean, index that help to see the overall performance of a given nation. This is World Bank statistical performance index. Uh, internally, there is a lot of, uh, you know categories, a lot of indicators, how the indicators are actually data are collected. You can refer the website and look, uh, you know, the relative comparison for different countries actually. When I came to the data uh, relative difference, uh, I took this map from Open Data Watch website. And then as you can see the map, countries with green color shows better score. That means the is relatively good data with com good completeness. Whereas a country with yellow and red color is, as you can see the legend actually in the right side, they have low score. That means uh, there is no enough data for any public users in their uh, national statistics office uh, in, in a good accessible and user friendly way. When we see the our uh, Judean member countries using this open data inventory data, uh, open data inventory index data. As you can see, Rwanda is found in the top with 64.6%, Tanzania is second, South Africa, and lastly, Ethiopia is in the bottom uh, with least score of 20.1% in Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire. You can, you can see the relative difference from this bar. When I come to the World Bank Statistics Performance Index, uh, so this also the, the, the data that show the overall performance, performance of uh, national statistics. Uh, as you can see, South Africa in the top, second Uganda, Rwanda. Uh, again, still Ethiopia is in the bottom uh, based on this uh, World Bank Statistical Performance data. Uh, we can use SGD indicators, different SGD indicators, uh, just to home here. It's difficult to go you know, all SGD indicators uh, here. I think uh, you can refer from this UN SASIS division, UN women, every data source, then you can compare the relative difference for different countries. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, that's, I think, it's better to stop here. Thanks, Wunderer. That's this is a very rich presentation.
with a lot of information, of course, and each one of the indices, we could have a separate webinar and separate session to focus on it. And as you saw, uh, Wendy Bear had taken these three categories of uh, global indices that measured equality, mostly um, gender equality. Also the two indices that uh, measured the data availability, capacity, and openness, the uh, ODEN uh, gender index and SBI of the World Bank. And then of course, uh, he gave you an overview of the SDGs. Uh, so this is really indeed very good presentation and we will make it available for the uh, for the members for sharing uh, and using uh, in your work if this, this comes, uh, if it's useful. So at this point, we have one more poll questions for you to run. So uh, Jay, over to you for administering that. Sure, thank you. Um, so if you recall at the start of my presentation, I asked you what information about the development data financing landscape you're interested in learning more about. We walked through the clearinghouse for financing development data that gave you access to a lot of that information. So now what I think would be interesting to learn more about is how would you use the information that we presented about the platform in your work? And again, you can select multiple options um, and those include advocate for more gender data financing in my country, learn about different statistical capacity building projects, compare gender data investments in the region or other. And as in the case with the first poll, if you select other, please drop in the chat um, specific things that you were thinking about. So I can see some people have started answering. So please feel free to submit your answers and we'll keep uh, this live for another couple, uh, another few seconds. I think we can give it last three seconds if you have a burning response. Um, but I will end the poll and share the results. And I think it's really interesting that people are most interested, as you can see with 100%, about learning about different statistical capacity building projects. And as I mentioned earlier, you can access information about 700 project documents, you can learn more about them. And as I mentioned, there's also the forum where you can connect with different people who work in that space. I think it's uh, really exciting to see that people are interested in comparing gender data investments in the region. That's something that you could do by looking at different, uh, looking at the regional view, but then also looking at specific countries. But that's definitely <laughs> something that we can bring back to the uh, project development team to learn more about and see how we can integrate that further. And of course, um, I'm happy to see from our GDM members that you'd use this information to advocate for more gender data financing in your countries. So back I, over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Jay, for, for that. Very interesting. <laughs> and, um, there's someone who is coughing and is not muted. <laughs> uh, um, and if you, uh, for those of you who joined later and missed that presentation by Jay from the Clearing House, we would make the recording of this uh, meeting available and you can browse through that. Or if you're really, really interested, contact Jay on the side and maybe you can even set up a one-on-one -on -one for, uh, for her to take you through that presentation. Um, for now, if you have any, um, any uh, questions, any um, uh, comments, any contributions, please uh, use, the, um, use the raise arm option, which is, uh, which is available. I'm trying to find out where. Uh, oh, under where you see reactions, at, uh, next to interpretation, there is a button called reactions. And if you click that, you will see a raise arm and you can click that and raise your arm or just unmute and speak if you have any comments. But also I wanted to put Miriam who's uh, with us uh, on the spot to see while people are thinking about their questions or any uh, contributions they want to make. I wanted to ask Miriam if you can give us a little bit of overview of some of the work that between you and ECA Paris 21 to 2x and ODW, we are planning 
for 2022. Uh, over to you, Marianne. Thank you, Sheda. So in the beginning, uh, at the end of January, we'll have a, a regional meeting with African countries um, organized and uh, more to come on that uh, early January. Uh, also coming uh, in the next year, so uh, we, we're going to expand the GDN to other um, continents and countries, and I will give you more news on that also uh, in January. And uh, coming also, uh, we'll have a platform uh, for the GDN on the Paris 21 website. Of course, you'll still have the UNECA platform that uh, it's, it's just going to be complementary platform. And we are also planning to do a podcast, a GDN podcast. So more, more on that uh, also uh, coming next year. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Miriam. And that's really, really exciting. And um, on the, on the Janu January event soon, we will let you know, and uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. And Fatu, uh, Fatuma and uh, Wunderbar and team and all the GDN team, is working on that and you will be, I think you will be very pleased with the program that we have. We really want engagement from the members for the Janu January event. So we will be, uh, we have a, a colleague that is joining us uh, for the team and we will be having some interviews with, uh, with all of you organized as uh, uh, try to sort of learn more about the state of gender data in your country and also what would be good to cover for the January event. So that the, the work, the, what, be, what is covered and also the outcome of the January event would be of use, real good use to you. So um, I do not see anybody's hand up. That means, um, uh, that means the presentations are very, very clear. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but still, if you, anyone wants to make any contribution, please uh, just uh, turn off, uh, turn on mute and speak. Otherwise, I'm going to hand it over to Fatu, Fatuma for some closing remarks and, um, and also closing the webinar. Fatuma, are you there? Yes, Shada. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, Fatima. If you want to do some closing remarks, because I don't see anybody having any questions, so uh, please go ahead. All right. Thank you, Shaida. Uh, thank you, Jahanara, and thank you, Wandibe, for your great and uh, and rich presentation. So, colleagues. Uh, uh, after one one hour of uh, presentation, and um, even if there was no d discussion, uh, as Seda said, presentations made by Jahanara and Wandibe are, are rich in information, and each of the presentation can be a, a webinar subject. So uh, let me congratulate both of them for that. And now we are uh, we are uh, at the end of uh, this meeting, and the various presentations allowed us to have uh, really fruitful information. Will not allow us to better understand the gender profile of uh, our uh, member states using various standards, indexes, and international data sources as well as financing development uh, uh, portal. So the, the presentation on financing development portal gave us an, an overview of financial sources of gender statistics, funding flows, the top gender data financing providers, and findings opportunity, and fees at all level, including global, regional, and uh, country level which gives us uh, opportunity to identify, to, to identify potential collaborators, funding opportunity, etc. cetera. Colleague, uh, colleagues, I can tell you that that is a powerful advocacy tool towards decision makers for, uh, for advocacy for funding of gender statistics, because 
I, I believe that once we provide our decision maker with such information, they can be able to take the right decision when it comes to improve not only uh, availability of gender statistics, but also uh, funding of gender statistics. That is a key issue in most of our member states. Now for the, for the presentation on gender profile of GDN member countries, this allowed us to know the performance of national statistics and also highlights the gender data gap across countries, which shows that countries are not at the same level, you know, particularly when, when it's come to the need for family planning, maternal mortality, birth attendance, uh, uh, birth attendance by, by skilled health uh, personnel. We saw that uh, even if in some areas there is some improvement, it is slow, particularly when it comes to the uh, uh, decrease of maternal mortality, same uh, as birth attendant uh, by skill uh, uh, by skilled health personnel. So uh, we see that despite uh, progress is noted, many need to be done in most of our member states in areas that have been covered by the, the study. We show that uh, we show really the relevance of the gender data network project and encourages us to deploy further effort between GDN to improve capacity of our member states in the collection analysis and dissemination of gender statistics for better policy information. However, I know that with the determination and expertise of our focal persons, we, we have all the, all the reason to believe in the success of the, battle, of the battle for the development of gender statistics in Africa. Uh, and I am sure with the, the uh, extension of the GDN uh, uh, project that has been highlighted now by Miriam, and the, all the activities that will be uh, covered by this uh, new project and the extension to other continents that will allow us really to learn from each other and also to get uh, more expertise within the, the project that will contribute to, the, uh, uh, to improve uh, the availability of gender statistics in Africa. Uh, however, uh, uh, given the challenge most of our member states are facing in monitoring SDG and Agenda 2063 from gender lens. Uh, 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 for, for us to address this challenge, uh, there is need to work closely together, you know, in collaboration and support each other as what we are doing now in order to build the, the required capacity for the, for the development of gender statistics in Africa. To this end, uh, we need really to perpetuate this kind of, inter uh, of interaction we have uh, 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 here uh, uh, at this meeting and, uh, and even before at the previous meeting where member states in collaboration with uh, um, uh, Paris 21, Data to X, uh, Open Data Watch and ETA have been working together to build capacity of our member states in various area. So uh, we need to replicate this uh, uh, in initiative, and particularly in the area of capacity building and also in area of advocacy, in order to have the political support of our, uh, our decision makers. So I would like uh, 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 once again to thank uh, our speakers for their great presentations, as well as our partner for the support given in the in the organization of this meeting. I will close by reiterating, by reiterating, reiterating I think I, feel I have difficult to pronounce this word, uh, to all of our, uh, our uh, participants. Uh, and uh, I see you in January as it has been just uh, presented. We are going to have a, a regional uh, meeting in January. And uh, I wish you Merry Christmas and Merry uh, and Happy New Year. Thank you for your attention. Over to you, Shaida.
And thank you. Thanks, Ratu, for really very well and comprehensive uh, review of our session and, and kind remarks in closing. And I would just wanted to thank our speakers as well, but also you in person, personally, for keeping up with the Gender Data Network mm -hmm. and keeping it going uh, in the Africa region, despite pandemic, despite all kinds of issues. So thank you to you and you and ECA. I also wanted to thank our interpreters who stuck with us. This was a technical session, but they did a great job. Every once in a while, I listened to them. It was really good. So if if everyone wants to just turn on their um, uh, uh, their uh, their camera for a second, maybe we can take a picture for those of you. And don't worry if you you don't think that you are perfect for a picture. But <laughs> oh, yeah, how lovely to see you and Sorcy and and uh, and of course, oh, it's good to see you all. So we we go uh, one, two, three for anybody who wants to. Um, can you see me on camera? I can't see myself. Can you see me? In fact, unfortunately, we don't see you. My camera is on since we started, but I cannot see myself. Ah, maybe well. can you make it the the top laptop? Did you use maybe if if you change the there in the top top? I mean, in the, the screen, there is sometimes uh, one who could close. If you see, I make it on now. You couldn't see me. Now. Uh, if it is... oh, I can't see it. Oh, so we, uh, well, Vatu, we're gonna Photoshop your picture in. <laughs> yes, yes, please do that. <laughs> okay, everybody, smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much. Lovely to see everyone, and we will definitely be more in contact in 2022. And uh, again, from all of us, happy holidays, uh, wherever you are, whatever you celebrate. Um, and a healthy and happy and more gender data your way and our way in 2022. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.